this morning. Um, and my name is Jennifer Curry, and I'm the managing editor of the Pittsburgh Business Times. I first wanted to thank our sponsors for this event. Our event sponsor is Comcast Business, and our host sponsor is the Wyndham Pittsburgh University Center. Let's give them a round of applause. I also wanted to pitch a couple of upcoming events that we have. On April 4th, we're going to be having our Biz Women Mentoring Monday event at Duquesne University Power Center. Um, this is an opportunity we usually have around, give or take a few, 40 um, women from the Pittsburgh business community who come, um, and it's a mentoring session, so people will walk around and spend you know, five, 10 minutes with each of these different women. Um, um, there's four or five or six different rounds. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to know people um, in kind of a speed networking type environment. Um, another event that we have coming up next month is our Corridors of Opportunity Beaver County. That's on the 7th of April at the Fez out in Beaver County. Um, obviously Beaver County is a um, kind of up and coming region right now. Um, they'll be talking a little bit about the, the cracker and what's going on with that. Um, as well as there's some other panelists on that, um, including the president of CCBC. Um, so I encourage you to sign up. You can go to our website, pittsburghbusinesstimes.com, um, to sign up for those events. And now I'm going to introduce our speaker for today. Howard Manns is a national speaker and the author of Success and Lunacy, What's the Connection? Um, he's been in leadership roles in advertising and marketing for over 30 years and believes he has a 10-year attention span, which accounts for his diverse background, including everything from construction and advertising to RCA recording artist and healthcare professional. Um, as a motivational speaker, Howard conducts enlightening, informational, and inspirational lecture, lectures tailored to his audience. Um, participants in the past have noted that his presentations are humorous, memorable, and hold lasting value, and they walk away with a renewed sense of enthusiasm for their careers, their relationships, and their lives. I'll leave you to be a judge for that today. Um, please welcome Howard Manns. <laughs> Thank you. I just realized that I set myself up for failure, didn't I? <laughs> How many of you got up about 5 o'clock this morning to get here? See, so most of you are crazy. This is going to work. Can you believe it's March already? No? How many of you said that last year? <laughs> okay. That's part of my point here. See, I know you have a work day. How many of you have to go to work after you're done here, right? <laughs> Why else would you get up this early to come out, right? Well. A little bit, I want to kind of give you a different perspective today. A different perspective on how you're living your life. And you'll find out as we go through it how I lived mine, and you'll say, yeah, he is crazy, and possibly just goes right across the street to the hospital when he's done here. They let him out for a little while. Anyhow, like everyone else here, I have had jobs where I've gotten up in the morning, I, as, as Jen mentioned, everything from advertising, and I always have to explain the rock musician because I had hair. I did at one time. Of course, nowadays you don't need it anymore. They shave it, it's cool. But I was an RCA re recording artist back in the 80s. I toured with the band Heart. I was their opening act. So that was fun. So you're saying, why are you here? Because I decided I could have stayed on drugs and then been on VH1 and be telling you what it did to me, but instead I got here and I'm still on drugs. I didn't say that, by the way, just in case you're writing. So why success and lunacy? I gotta tell you, if you're like me, how many people in here, are, how many of you are people watchers? You sit at the, we all are, right? You look at people's faces and sometimes you think, what's going on in there, right? I do that with family members, by the way. I wanna talk about success and lunacy from a standpoint that I've been studying people for probably about the last 20, 30 years. What makes people successful? Anyone ever wonder why you're listening to the Beatles, why you listen to Beethoven? I wanted to find out what is the one thing that they all had in common, because they're no different than us, right? They're the same. But what's different, I found out from all this research, is they're all crazy. Every one of them, they're crazy. And you may be crazy too, so I'm gonna help you find out if that's true. I don't want you to slow down. I just want you to question where you're going right now. So 
I'll go through a lot of my jobs. As, I, as Jen mentioned, I have a 10-year attention span, which means about every 10 years, I would walk into a job and say, God, this isn't what I want to do. Have any of you had that moment this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look next to you in case you're here with your boss. But anyhow, what I want to talk about, I want to talk about insanity and crazy. I want to talk about the difference between them, because there is. See, crazy has gotten a bad rap. It's got, every time somebody shoots something up, sorry to bring the news into this, but they think they're crazy. It's not necessarily true. See, we're very processed nowadays. Food, anybody else like me drank green juice this morning? I wouldn't have fed it to a billy goat like 10 years ago, but now I drink it because where do you not want to be if you're sick? A hospital. Sorry if there's any hospital people in here. <laughs> But the reality is, we're processed. We have cell phones. We have texting now, right? No FaceTime. No FaceTime. All we do is sit there and we go through our phones. And I'm guilty of it too. When was the last time one of you went to the bathroom? You have to tell me without your cell phone. Okay, I'm the only one. I'm sorry. <laughs> but even our entertainment, our entertainment has been processed. And I'll tell you why. Who here watches American Idol? Anyone? Nobody does any of these things. It's like asking a ship full of men on a cruise who takes Viagra. No one's going <laughs> to raise their hand, but you know there's over three million people taking it. The reality is, if you do watch American Idol, we process all these people now. And if you do and you just didn't want didn't to admit it, could you imagine Bob Dylan on American Idol? <laughs> I don't think he'd have made it to Hollywood, do you? But did he not have an influence over every piece of music that you listen to? See, crazy is a perception. That's all it is. How many of you have children? One child, two child, three children, four, five, six. Oh, we stopped. See, crazy is a perception. These are my kids. That means crazy, right? By today's standards, to have seven children You've got to be out of your mind. But you know what I'm teaching them? Be crazy. Not those times when the police called because you guys were out in the field and you made a mess of everything. We've had all those moments. What you're looking at up there is two PhDs, three masters, a bachelor's, and one who's still looking for himself. But that's okay. That's okay. But I want them to be different. So what is success? Who believes success is money? See, at least one. If you're like me, you have, well, let me tell you the truth. I have enough money to live comfortably for the rest of my life. Anyone else out here? Okay, really, I have to die by Tuesday for that to be true. <laughs> but the idea is, you know, is not really money, right? So I want to talk about the difference between insanity. I'm going to encourage everyone to be a little bit crazier. See, ins insanity has become, it's actually become a mainstay. We're unconscious about it. Everyone knows what the definition is by now, right? You do the same thing over and over. We hear that's our anthem nowadays, right? Our anthem is we do the same thing over and over and we expect different results. Do you get up in the morning and you go to work and then you come home, you eat dinner, you're probably brain dead like I am when I do a full day like that, you might watch some TV, you might sit around, talk to your significant other, you go to bed, and you get up tomorrow morning, and what do you do? You do it over again. How many of you have got to Friday and say, thank God it's Friday? We all do. We all do. But how many Fridays have you done that? And how many times have you looked behind you and said, what have I done this week to do anything different? See, what, I'm, what I want to get to today is, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Who here believes, like me, that we all came here with a purpose? Do you? So you have to question yourself, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I told you I'd share some stories, and if I didn't, I'm telling you now. Um, I was an advertising executive. I worked at Mark Advertising here in town. And uh, I was waiting for the bus. I lived up in South Park. I was waiting at the bottom of the street with my, with my bag for the bus, Port Authority. My, kids, one of my sons, who was 14 at the time, he and his friends are waiting for the bus as well, for the school bus. I hear them talking. And one of them said, you know, I can't wait till we graduate, and then we can do what we want. 
Yeah, we all laugh about that one. So I couldn't, I couldn't hold that one in. I had to say, guys, I don't want to rain on your parade, but let me tell you something. You're going to graduate high school. You're going to get a job. You're going to get married. You might have a kid. Boom, you're back here at the bus stop with your bag. <laughs> well, guess what? They all went to, they went to school depressed that day, but it was OK. I opened it up for them. You know what happened? To me, though, that day, that day, I said, what am I doing? I'm making ads. We had talked before this uh, to a couple people who are in advertising. I make ads for Long John Silvers and Pearl Vision and True Value. And then I go home, and I'm crazy because I have to be on a plane tomorrow morning. And I thought, this isn't what I want to do. That, remember, that was after being a rock musician. Rock musician wasn't any different. I was in front of 20,000 people with a guitar. Dallas! And after about three years, I said, da sit down, Dallas. Because I said, been there, done that. We've heard that one, right? So there's some statistics out there. Anybody into statistics and reading some of these things? There's one out there now that says 80% of Americans hate their job in five years. Again, don't look left or right in case you're here with other company people. But on your way in this morning, if and it was dark yet, for at least for me, but if you look at the cars next to you as you're driving in, you can tell who's been working for five years at one company, can't you? <laughs> okay? They know sign language <laughs> if you pass them. One line, one anyhow. But anyhow, after that bus stop incident, I decided to quit. I quit. And one month later, I was done. I went in and I resigned. They were shocked. My family said, you're crazy. You see where I'm going now. <laughs> and I was to everybody else, but not to me. Do you know why? Because I felt free for once. I was going to do what I wanted. And guess what? I had no backup plan, none. What, what, what was I thinking? I was thinking what I'm talking to you about. This is one life. Until someone comes back and tells me we get a second chance, it's one life. So am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? So I quit. I got into healthcare. And those of you, anyone here in healthcare? Then you know I'm crazy. I went into healthcare after advertising. But I felt like I was making a difference. I was an administrator for personal care homes, probably about nine different facilities. I worked with uh, a lot of seniors. I worked with uh, independent living, hospice. I went into all of it because I saw my aunt in a nursing home probably about 1990. And I said, i got to fix this before I need it. This is crazy. Because guess what about health care? I'll give you the hint. No one knows anything about it until they need it. And then they needed to know three months ago. OK? That's what it's all about. So what I want to talk about today is this definition, crazy. Now, I don't want to talk about the senseless, impractical, totally unsound stuff that we know of. I want this part. The intensely enthusiastic. Have anyone here ever been intensely enthusiastic about something that they wanted to do. Most of us did, and it's great that some of you are raising your hands, but I'll tell you what, I was that way in music. I didn't need American Idol. I didn't need them. I practiced my butt off and nothing else made sense. If you came to my house and knocked on the door, I was holding a guitar. Why? I was getting to be very, very well versed in my, in my, my trade. So I wanted to get into it. So I decided, OK, I'm crazy. And now that everyone agreed, I didn't have to worry anymore. So that's the, that's, that's the key, too. If you do crazy one time, everybody expects it, and they don't think about it anymore with you. We are talking in between, uh, at the end here, where I'm working with a couple companies now. And uh, I'm not good with corporate meetings, because I don't speak. I speak out of turn, and I don't speak right. And I'm not, what do we call it, politically correct. And that's, I can't even pronounce that word. But let me tell you about, I mentioned I, I showed you seven kids. Well, I also have seven, seven and three quarters grandchildren, too. That next generation is going to scare the crap out of you. And I'll tell you why. Here's another one. No one's going to admit to this. Who watches The Walking Dead? All right, two people went like this. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and that just means the rest of you do, but you're not going to admit it. OK, maybe you don't. But here's the story. These are all true stories that I, you, you can't make this crap up. I have a five-year-old grandson. 
Now, he, if you know, don't know about The Walking Dead, I'll, I'll be fair. It's the apocalypse, people die, they come back, they bite the living, and then the living turns into dead, and it's just a mess. And the only way to stop them is you have to shoot them in the head or stab them in the head. It's a gory show. My five-year-old grandson is not allowed to watch it, but he knows the entire concept. So we're sitting having coffee at Starbucks. Who, whose grandparents ever took them to Starbucks for a cup of coffee? <laughs> He's reading his game. Uh, the, uh, I guess it was a comic book, but it was also a, a game because they know how they could launch a spaceship in NASA. We can't find our messages on our iPhone. But I said to him, I said, Kenny, I said, what happens if Pap Pap dies and becomes a zombie? Now at that age, they're serious. He says, you won't. I said, but what if I do? He put his head down, and then he looked up and he says, I'll have to put you down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't visit them very often, okay? <laughs> so scared to fall asleep during a TV show, you know? <laughs> but, but it's a true story. That's what, that's what this next generation, you think you're scared right now? Watch this. The reality is, that children are creative up to about the age of four. Do you ever hear that? They'll color outside the lines, as a good friend of mine, Jeff Tobe, says. They color outside the lines. They don't care. They don't know the rules. But what happens to all of us is we are programmed to about the age of seven. We come out as a complete empty, ep empty screen. We have no data. So what happens is, we get programmed what to like, what not to like, what not to do, all the things, like don't touch a candle flame. I could have figured that out, <laughs> but we're programmed. So the rest of our life, we have that, all that in there. So me, I'm kind of proud that I've gone crazy, and I don't plan to come back. By the end of this, I'm hoping some of you get on that same bus, because you've got to think about what you're doing. You may already be crazy and you don't know it, by the way. I'll show you that one, too. Then you can go home and tell your significant other, I'm crazy, and he or she'll say, I know. Um, who tried to fit in when you were in school? You're in high school or grade school? The reality is most of us did. Why? Because those seven years that we were programmed to make sure that we walk like this, we talk like this, and you have the right shoes and you fit in. Nowadays, it's even worse than ever because kids have to fit in. Me, an entire outfit for two weeks was probably $20. Now the shoes are 80 okay? So there's a lot of pressure on them. How did we become so fast-paced that we forgot about our dreams? Who had a dream when you were young that you just had to give it up? Somebody want to share that? You don't want to share it? I will share my, I mean, I didn't want to be a cowboy or anything, but I did want to do, be a rock musician. So I started to realize that, yeah, you know what? I'm living some of my dreams. Nowadays, we have TV clickers. When I was young, I was the TV clicker. How many of you had that? Mom would say, change, that, change the channel to two. Of course, we only had three channels, so it was easy. You had to go around and do all this. But the reality is, we now have the internet. Isn't that wonderful? That has all the answers. And if it's on the internet, it has to be true. Bonjour. Anyone saw that commercial? OK. <laughs> the reality is, anything on there. I tell you what, we have this. How many of you, it's so easy nowadays to be diagnosed, right? It's so easy. How many of you have ever gone on Google because you had a backache, a headache, a mole somewhere, and you went on the internet? What'd you find out? You're going to die. <laughs> That's right. You don't have a chance. You are going to die. There's no way around it. I was, uh, one of the books, and I, I will promote myself here too, I've written two books because one of them was I was in healthcare marketing. I wanted to find out what doctors wanted. When doctors met with either pharmaceuticals or somebody, I met quite a few doctors here, Chicago, Ohio. One of the doctors in Chicago told me, Dr. Kahari, uh, it wasn't Chicago, in fact, uh, it was Maryland, and he said that every human being is four websites away from having cancer and dying. If you've ever done it, I've done it. I've gone on there and looked until it got so bad that I thought, I'm dead by morning. There's no use in doing any of this. So I wanted to demonstrate what, what uh, I thought, I'm going to do a test just so I can show all of us. I went on to Google and I Googled this. What's wrong with me? Has anyone ever done that? Okay, no one will admit that one, but <laughs> I did. I thought, for this exercise. 
And you all know what Google's like. It tells you up in the corner how fast it found all those answers. It found 1.5 billion <laughs> links to tell me what's wrong with me. It could have just been an, it could have just been, you know, allergies. But so I thought, you know what? This isn't going to work. I don't have that kind of time. I said, what's wrong with me mentally? Well, I got it down to 123 million ways to find out what's wrong with you. Now, this is serious. About three years ago, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I need to go, I need to go get counseling. It's true. You know, it's, it's the new millennium. If you don't have a counselor, you don't fit in. So I said, I need to go find out why I can't focus. Well, guess what they found out? I have ADD. And I said, how did I catch that? Did I out in the rain without a coat? What happened? The reality was, if anyone's ever looked up ADD and looked up highly creative people, the characteristics are pretty much equal. They're the same. Remember all those people up front I told you, Beethoven, the Beatles? They all had ADD. But we're so quick to diagnose nowadays that, you know, we're probably giving Ativan or something to that sort, we're probably giving that to, to the next Van Gogh. Don't worry, he'll never do all that. He'll sit in the corner. They wanted to put me on Ritalin. I said, I would I, I'd disrupt math class. I can't do that. So I never took this stuff. I am not putting down, if anyone, anyone out here believe they have ADD besides me? Okay, it's all right. Shake your head. You don't have to put your hand up because then all your friends, <laughs> one person's proud of it like me. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> exactly. You know, when I was young, how do they find it now? You don't, you, you're not doing well in school. Okay, your grades are down, you just don't care. When I was young, that was called, you're grounded until it all straightens out. Now they'll give you medication. So I'm not dismissing that ADD isn't an issue. Remember, we're so processed, food and everything else, I don't doubt it. But I've learned to use mine, <laughs> okay? And if you do feel you have it, use it. Anyone who's in, you mentioned you're in medical. Anyone who doesn't know this book, this is called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. Do you believe that they wrote a book on it? In 1970, it had 22 diagnoses. That's what was in it. The last one that they put out has 500 plus diagnoses. I saw a cute thing, I think it was Jim Carrey who said that something like 400 people uh, die each year from coconuts falling on them, but it's okay, they're coming up with a vaccine. What's scary about this is you only need less than five symptoms to be diagnosed with a mental illness. How many of you ever lost your car keys? Went and looked in the same drawer in the same place four times while you were looking for them, right? How many of you have ever entered a room and have no clue why you went in there? <laughs> See, we always say that's old people. That's not. How about this one? It's a weekend, you get in your car to go to the store, but your car takes the ramp toward work. <laughs> right. Folks, I just gave you three. One more, we get ourselves an Ativan salt lick for our office. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Wouldn't that work for you? You call in an employee and you say, sit down, lick that for a second and have a seat, I want to talk to you. <laughs> but the reality is this. How many, of, what was the last thing that you did that was perceived crazy? Anyone want to share that? Anybody brave enough to share that? It's early in the morning, so no one's going to, right? Okay, great. Um, so I work for a bakery, and my boss called me on Saturday about three weeks before Christmas, two weeks before Christmas, and said, hey, what do you think about doing a pop-up store? And I said, cool, when? Like summer, you know? No, no, the week after Christmas. And I went, Sure. <laughs> and, and I joked with my family that I had a baby over Christmas called Kiosk because it was, I mean, literally 70 hours a week of insane amount of work. So. Key word being insane, folks. <laughs> but, I mean, and it was hugely successful and everybody thought we couldn't do it and all of the employees said, you're nuts. And I said, no, no. We got this, and you're not going to apart. How many believe that everything happens for a reason? 
We all do. You can probably all agree that you are right where you are right now in life, in your job, in your marriage, in relationships. You could probably all agree with me that you are there based on the decisions you've made up till now in your life, right? Every decision got you to where you're going. You just have to question whether it was your decision or were you following somebody else. See, I mentioned about leaving advertising after that bus stop. I didn't have a backup plan. I was considered crazy. But in that whole process, I got to do this, write books. When the steel industry went down, I was a steel worker. I went to college at 35 years old. I would have never gone to college. No one in my family went to college. Everyone was a steel worker. I'm still the only one out of five brothers that went to college. Okay? That would never have happened. I would have never gotten into advertising. My point is, things happen all the time, right? Every day, you are getting some kind of signs, right? You've got to stop trying to fit in and start standing out. That's what my message is going to be today. Jim Carrey said, uh, I, I first off, I'm a people pleaser. Anyone else in here a people pleaser? Okay. What happens when you're a people pleaser is you don't do a lot of things for yourself. You do them for other people. Jim Carrey said one of his quotes was, our need for acceptance can make us invisible in this world. Think about it. The ones that are getting somewhere are the ones that are speaking out, saying what they want to do. I spent most of my life not doing that. But see, you have to be able to do that. So, I'm not saying to run out and quit your job, by the way, so don't anyone come back to me on that one and say, yeah, that was crazy, now I'm on food stamps. <laughs> no, I'm simply saying that if you are supposed to be where you are right now, if you are supposed to be in that job, make a difference in it. Make a difference. Do something to break the mold. Get out of your cube. <laughs> Go out and do something different. This is interesting, but we talk about crazy and insanity. Do you know that there is a thin line between genius and psychopath? Do you know why? Because they both share the same negative traits. It's how you use them. John Lennon, genius. Why? Did he really care what he said? Did he, make a, did he change the world for that matter? Yes. David or Mark Chapman killed him. Was he not a psychopath? Because he thought he was John Lennon, so he had to kill him. But they both shared those same traits. How, it, how they use it, it differs. I went through all kinds of studies to find out what made I mentioned Beethoven. You know what Beethoven did every single morning? He counted 60 coffee beans. Not 61, not 59. He counted 60 coffee beans. You imagine him sitting there doing this. That's what he did every morning. Is he crazy? Stephen, Stephen, uh, Stephen King writes 2,000 words every day whether he wants to or not. If you want to be a writer, that's what you're supposed to do. He's obviously done it. He's, he's been successful. Let me ask you this. If any of you, right now when you leave here, make sure I'm not in the hallway when you do this, uh, but if you got out of here or even on the street or in your office today, you got up and you started dancing. Remember the Steve, the Steve Martin happy feet? Okay. <laughs> If you got out of your cubicle today, or your office, or on the street, and started dancing, what would happen? You think you'd get a ride in the back of like a nice sounding siren thing? Yeah. Why? Because they'd say you're crazy. This is an interesting quote I found. It says, those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who couldn't hear the music. Does that make sense to everybody? The music is life. It's life. I mean, I happen to be a musician, but the reality is you've got to dance while the music's playing, right? Right now, you've got to dance. You've got to do something. There's a book out there by a guy named uh, Stephen Pressfield. He calls it, it's a war, on, war of art. And what he's done is he's personified what he calls resistance. Resistance is everything you do that stops you from getting to your next goal. And he says that it gets worse the closer you get to your goal. That's why so many people quit. Right at the very end. We've all heard that, right? People quit just when they're about to have that breakthrough. That's why there's so few people that do it. I'm encouraging you today to screw that. Just go that next, next step. It doesn't matter. Now, don't hurt anybody unless they need it. But 
fear is what he talks about. Fear holds us back. And what is fear? Fear is stress. Stress is fear. Stress is just a belief that something bad's going to happen, and we waste a lot of time on it, and then nothing ever happens, right? So we worry about it. There's a, um, uh, basically we're two people. We're that person that goes to work every day, that insanity. And we're that person who gave up that dream when we were young to do something. Now, I'll be 62 next month. When my father was 42, I thought he was the oldest human being on earth. Anybody else feel that? I had to adjust my thoughts, okay? I have seven kids. They remind me I'm old. It's not a big deal. But I will tell you this. One year from now, if not, this is on my desk at home. One year from now, you will be really bothered that you didn't start something today, this year. That's what I want to get across. People aren't, cr people aren't really crazy. Crazy people just think differently. That's all. I mentioned everything happens for a reason. We get signs every day. How many of you either met your, your significant other or got your job on a pure fluke? You walked into a coffee shop, you met somebody. Have you ever sat at a coffee shop and had somebody come up to you and just start talking? You didn't know why. I happen to be a firm believer in angels, but that's another presentation. But the reality is, we get signs every day. There's a, an author named Brian Tracy, if you haven't heard of him. He says, every year, each one of us gets three to four ideas that could easily make us millionaires. Three to four ideas. How many of you thought of something and said, yeah, I'm not doing that? There are signs. Are you listening? That's what it is. Because what's happened here is these people think differently. They were first crazy. Every one of them were crazy. Then they became successful. And then what happens? They're geniuses. Go for the genius. That's what you got to think a little bit different. Um, and do you have to be smart? I don't know if you ever saw this. How many are on Facebook? Come on, it's not a Viagra question. Good. <laughs> I also get, I ask that question, I'll get two people. I'll say, wow. That guy is really fooling everybody because everyone thinks they're on it. I saw a poster on there that said it had a picture of the Wright brothers running down the hill with that first plane, and you know it's going to crash. And the saying was, the world is full of inventions created by people too stupid to know they were impossible. Make sense? Try something impossible. Do something. And is it too late right now? Like I just said, 62? No, I'm starting another career. I can... I don't know what I'll be when I grow up. I told someone earlier that I think I'll have to work a half a day on the day of my funeral anyhow, at least, at least the first four hours. The reality is, it's not too late. We've all heard this one, right? Life begins at 40. Why? The first 20 years, we are programmed. We're programmed to think a certain way, get that job, do the whole thing, have the kids, and then what do we do the next 20 years? We go into counseling to deal with the first 20 years because we didn't know what was going on. And then what do you end up with? You end up with baggage. You don't know how long it's been on the airport turnstile going around, do you? Have you met people like that? Here's, here's I challenge you to do this today. Today, think about going back. How many remember five years ago? Pretty clearly, okay? You get 30 seconds to call yourself of five years ago. What would you say? Good thing you dumped his butt. Good thing you took that job. You call yourself of five years ago, you get yourself on the phone, what would you say to yourself? That's a test to see how far you're going and where you're going and see if you're going in the right direction. And obviously it only begs you to go the other direction. Call yourself five years from now and what will you be saying to that person? He was right, I am crazy, but now I'm wealthy. Now I'm doing what I want to do. Now I have my own job and I don't have to worry about other people. And, I, and that doesn't mean that you quit and you start your own company. It just means find out what it is. We've all heard all of that. The, the life is a journey. You know, sometimes we have to be pushed. Sometimes things happen to have to happen to prove to you that you can do the impossible. When the steel industry went down, I'm going to tell you, when I went in to show them my transcripts from high school at 35 years old, they probably wanted to know who put his shoes on for him to get here today. I was a rock star. I had hair down to here. I could care less about school, right? 
Sometimes you have to be forced. There's a story of a guy who's uh, he's a millionaire, he's in LA, he has a huge house in Bel Air, he holds a big party, and in the back he has this huge swimming pool and it's full of sharks and alligators. And he tells all the people at his party that he's having a cocktail party, he says, anyone that could jump in that pool, swim to the other side, I will give you anything you want and I can do it. Look at my I have Lamborghinis, anything. Where everybody laughed at him and said, then a moment later there's a guy swimming like hell across the pool to the other side. And he gets out and this man just can't believe it. He goes up and he says, you're the bravest man I've ever met in my life. What? I can't believe you did this. I told you I'd give you anything. What would you like? He said, well, first I'd like the name of the person who pushed me. <laughs> now, the moral of the story is nobody would have jumped in that pool. He didn't have a choice. But did he make it across? You, know? you can do things that you really don't understand if you go through it. We've all heard this. How many of you can look back in high school and say, wow, was that a stupid thing? I can't believe I wore two different pair of socks that day. You don't remember that. But in 20 years, you'll be more disappointed by not doing something right now. I work in, uh, I, I was mentioning I work with seniors right now in independent living. Um, actually, Go Governor Thornburg lives, it's, it's called Longwood at Oakmont. Um, Governor Thornburg, Howard Hanna, the, the, the dad who's 97, as sharp as can be, but these guys live there, and in every single one of them, inside, there's a little boy who says, what in the hell happened? Who could remember when they were a teenager and look where you are now? Who thought that growing up would take a lot longer? It goes really fast. I mentioned earlier that usually, and this, is, this isn't long enough, I usually say, how many people would like to, but I also ask the question, how many of you out here have ever wanted to sing in front of people? Like, in front of 100 people, 2,000 people, just go up there and sing. I'm getting heads that turn, turn no. I always get someone who says, yeah, and I usually bring my guitar and I bring it out, and you fool, come on up, <laughs> and we sing a song. But you know what? It's like that whole walking on coals thing, after they're done, it's a release. You got to do something that you wanted to do. And you can still do that singing thing. Just go about 20 miles from your house, go to a karaoke bar, no one knows you. It's okay. But you want to become a legend. You want to be something. What are you going to tell your grandchildren? You don't want to just tizzle away and be nothing. I leave with this. I want you to think about this. Has anyone ever heard this? The two most important days of your life the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. Has anyone figured out why yet? And you could. I think I figured out why. That's why I'm up here. I mentioned that Stephen Pressfield uh, book. One of the things that he says in that book is, you know, people are afraid to do this because you'll be laughed at. You should be laughed with. But you know what he says? If you are laughed at and you screw up, that's the price you pay for being on the field and not in the stands. Isn't that a cool quote? Don't care about what people say. Just go and do it. It doesn't matter. So there's, there's a, I mentioned in healthcare, if any of you are, are familiar with hospice, there's a book out there, or an article, I think it might be a book, is by a hospice nurse who asked what their top five things that they regret. You know what number one was? I didn't do what I wanted to do. How many of you can fit into that? You're not doing what you want to do. And again, I can't push it enough. Don't quit your job. But if you're at that job, make a difference. Make people know, I, I just heard this the other day, but when you leave a job, they should really be, a, they should miss you. And if they don't, what are you? You're nothing more than somebody who sits at that desk this week. The reality is you need to make something. So if people tell you, I've heard this all my whole life, you got to be realistic. Guess what? Realistic people don't accomplish anything extraordinary. Nothing. Do we have problems in our life? Yeah, that's why you have a job. If there's no problems, we have nothing that we have to solve, right? So it's always going to be a challenge. But you want to make a difference. Being realistic is for mediocre people. You just don't do anything. And I'm here today doing this. I have to be some place this afternoon to interview a couple people. and to be It's fine. Is it what I want to do? I haven't reached that 10-year limit yet that says, oh, this is crappy, I'm going home. 
I know I probably will do that. So let me wrap up with just giving you five reasons why you really should start right now. And the first one, you'll never have it all together. Anyone know someone that has it all together? They really don't have it all together, do they? Everyone's going through something that nobody knows anything about. Is that, I've heard that statement recently and it's true. The next one, if you don't start going somewhere, you'll never arrive. You'll just go to work every day. I challenge people on Friday, you should be writing down on a note card, what did I do in the last five days that moved me closer to what I really want to do? Even if it's your job, if you're trying to finish a project, what did I do? What did I learn? They say, I think it was uh, Tony Robbins who says at the end of the day, you should say, uh, did I make a difference in someone's life today? Did I laugh? And ADD says, I don't remember the third one. But <laughs> the point is, you have to make a difference every single day. So the next one is, there are no guarantees. My father worked for, what, 40 some years at the steel industry. Do those jobs, la they happen anymore? I mentioned someone before we were up here that there's a, there's a study out there now that says people who are graduating college in the last five years, started about five years ago, will change careers seven times before they retire. Seven, not jobs, careers, seven times. That goes back to the people who are unhappy five years into their job, right? They want to do something else, but you get stuck. You get stuck. How many people know someone who has gotten stuck and who's always complaining, I should quit this job, and they've been doing it for 10 years? I know a couple people that are that way. So you've got, there's so many opportunities out there. There are kids out there that are 12 years old making millions of dollars because they know how to use this internet and we don't, right? They created something. Sometimes the majority, if you've ever been in a situation where you disagreed with everybody else, and you just said, okay, let me go over on your side, you're right. Sometimes it just means all the fools are on one side. Stand up for what you believe to do. They say the best way to get rid of all fear is to look at the worst case scenario of anything and resolve to accept it. Even death. Okay, so if I die, I don't have any problems anymore. Someone else has got to deal with all this. But if, the, if your, your worst fear is I will lose this job, you will get another one. If you are worried that, oh my God, I'll go bankrupt, you will be able to make more money. You can go online and sell. Anybody here working or doing anything online that you're making money with? I am. I sell books, I sell videos. I would never think of that stuff, but I do, okay? The next one is, this is life. It's simple, it's not a run through. So you see, I just wanted to get across to everybody here that you gotta ask yourself, how crazy are you? Are you crazy enough to go out and do something you really wanna do, regardless of everybody, anybody else? And those who go out of here and say, I'd never do any of that stuff, you're not crazy, work on it. You'll get to it, because right now you're insane and you don't know it yet, but you are insane. So you have to ask yourself, are you just living some illusion of sanity to pretend? And who's, who's on LinkedIn here? Okay. If you look for me, link into me, but there's an article I have coming out. It's called, How to Make People Think You're Normal. It started out with just two sentences. You can't, you aren't. <laughs> but then I thought I'd better elaborate a little bit. As I said, everyone can be something different. I'm doing it. I couldn't be up here and telling you and then go back and go to my job like this. No, I'm doing this, and guess what? If next week I decide... I don't want to do that, I want to start a rock band again. By the way, I'm doing that, but <laughs> it's because I don't know what I'll be when I grow up. I just want to leave you with this thought. Anybody who tells you, remember the Wright Brothers thing I brought up? That everyone thinks things are impossible. This is what I want to leave you with. Impossible is only an opinion. It's usually an opinion by people who don't want to get up and do something, or by people who don't want to see you do something and make them look stupid, right? So I want you to be kind of one of the crazies. Next year when you say, I can't believe it's March, I want you to look back this year and say, wow, I said that last year. What have I done differently? Who understands what the fear of success means? The fear of success simply means, I never understood it. I knew the fear of failure, but not the fear of success. Why would I be afraid of success? I finally figured it out. You're going to lose friends. 
You're going to lose some close friends, but you're going to make some new ones. But we don't get to that part because we're still afraid of that first part. So I'm encouraging you to go out. I think it came back with, um, with, uh, oops, with uh, Paul Simon had that song, Still Crazy After All These Years. Well, I'm encouraging you to go out and be crazy after all these years. <laughs> you know, change it. Do something different. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. I do, have, I do have books up here after. They're for sale. If you want a road map, it's up here. And uh, I'll be around after it's over. Okay. I'm not going to use the mic. I hope you can all hear me. Thank you, Howard, for speaking with the, for us today. We really appreciate it. We're going to do the door prize drawing. So Jen will be So Chris McCoy, are you still here, Chris? On his way to be crazy. I love it when they take it up real quick. <laughs> Marissa? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great Thank rest you. of your day. I just went in you. You did? Yeah. Okay, I'll accept. Yeah, I bought you. Oh, too funny. Yes. <laughs>